So, welcome back. Uh, in this video we are gonna play around with npm and uh, look out how we could install node packages, uh, how to use npm install, what ways there are to install packages and what difference the different ways. Uh, I will continue where we ended the last video, so we are, have done a Vagrant app, we have do, done Vagrant SSH, so we have logged into our Vagrant machine, uh, and uh, that's what we're looking at uh, at the moment in the terminal window here. So if I check out how the directory looks, it's our repo uh, repository we have uh, cloned down from GitHub. Um, with the vagrant file and stuff like that but as you see in this case we don't have any application done for you uh, in this course you have to do, do this stuff for yourself uh, so it's just a basic uh, vagrant um, files uh, we don't find any JavaScript files or any folders where your application should lie and, and stuff like that so we, we're gonna start from an empty um, empty point with this boilerplate. Um, one thing, um, this is as you see I have logged into uh, my Vagrant machine uh, I have another uh, tab here uh, where this is on my local host so this is uh, basically the synced um, folder so we're gonna see the same files uh, from my Mac uh, as from the Ubuntu virtual machine. Uh, on my Mac system I'm gonna start my editor uh, and I'm gonna use uh, an editor called Atom. Uh, you probably work with WebStorm or, or stuff like that, that's a great um, IDI. Uh, but I'm gonna, in the demo videos, I think I'm gonna use Atom uh, as my editor uh, it's it's a little bit simpler. It don't have every features that WebStorm have, so please use WebStorm if you like it, uh, or choose Sublime or whatever editor you like. Um, we don't care about that. Uh, but I'm in in this demo. I'm gonna use uh, the editor uh, Atom. So I'm gonna start uh, Atom with uh, from this folder by writing Atom uh, and then a dot. Uh, and now it started on another screen I had, so I'm dragging the window in here. Uh, okay, so we see, okay, I have my, have my demo uh, folder and here we find the uh, Vagrant files and uh, all stuff like that. And I can open them up and, and, and write stuff in, in them. Yeah. Uh, but back to the Vagrant, uh, I'm switching back tabs and go to my Vagrant machine, the Ubuntu machine. It's here we're gonna write uh, our commands. Um, so I'm gonna write clear to clear the screen up. Okay, let's let's say I wanna start a node application at this point in this folder. This is gonna be the root folder of the application. Uh, and I'm gonna start that. The first thing is uh, if I don't have anything uh, cloned down or, or something like that, it's to create what we call a package.json. Uh, it's a meta file that describes the project and describes what dependencies the project is gonna have, uh, different kind of uh, npm packages. The, that we will use in this project and so on. And, and the, okay, you can create this file by writing it. It's a simple JSON file, but um, the common way to do this is using npm for it. And I'm gonna write npm in it. Uh, what this is gonna do is it's gonna ask you um, a couple of questions. Uh, you see, uh, this is a utility program that starts up. Uh, and the first question we see is uh, name and it's if I just um, take enter here it's gonna choose the name Vagrant uh, I don't like it I'm gonna call it demo in this uh, case 
Uh, I take enter, version, okay, we can go with the default, just enter, description, this is just a demo. Uh, entry point, this is gonna be the, the, um, the name of the file where the node application is going to start. Um, the default is index.js, uh, many choose app.js and I'm gonna use app.js. Test command, uh, we're gonna leave it in this course, we don't gonna talk about how to write uh, tests and stuff, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to that later, but uh, for now we just leave that uh, stuff. Um, then we're gonna use the git repository and npn finds that okay you, you are in a repository so it's gonna take that URL and that's fine. Uh, keywords, okay, it's node, it's YAML script, uh, it's a demo. Just uh, if you're gonna do uh, create a npm patch package or, or things that you're gonna provide for the community, it's good to think about these keywords uh, so people can find your package. Uh, in this case, we we just playing around and we learning this stuff. Uh, author, your own name. Uh, license. I'm going with the default, and then we ready and and you see we got um, the outscript of the package dot json file and uh, we see this is json stuff and all the things we have done all the default stuff uh, and stuff like that uh, so is this okay write yes and enter uh, clear now when we look in the file system, lsl, we see that npm has created this package.json for us. So let's bring up Atom and look at it. Here we have the file. Uh, this is the same JSON st stuff that we had in the terminal window. So nothing um, special there. Um, as I said, this file is this is meta information for describing the project, but this this file can also hold the information about other things. As I said, the dependency we needed if we're gonna install a npm package and use it in an application, we we probably should also define it in this package.json. And so when we upload this to the repository and someone else downloads it or clone it, then they should run npm install and read through this file and see what dependencies this application is going to have and then download it and, and, and install it. But we can also write stuff like uh, we're going to... Um, do different uh, commands and stuff. Uh, we see that we have a, a value called scripts uh, and it has test and a string which is something like commands we can uh, write and uh, execute through npm. Uh, so for example if I'm going to have tests to my code. I probably have installed a test framework like Mocha or Yasmin or something like that. Uh, and then I can, when I'm uh, using this, I can say, okay, for the command test, I want to do this and this. I'm going to start the Mocha program, do the tests in these folders and, and stuff like that. So we can specify uh, a couple of, of of commands we can use. Uh, in this case we see we have the scripts test so if I take the terminal window again uh, if I write npm test you see that this was, was written out and that's exactly the same as we was defined here in test. We can uh, do our own stuff. We can have some maybe called build and we can just echo uh, uh, 
do build stuff. Um, you probably, if you have a build command, you have downloaded some uh, build libraries in previous course. You have used Browsify for this, and if you go back and look how the package files look in that course, you see that we have predefine a couple of different commands like this and starting to do browsify and, and other stuff. We d we're not gonna go through that kind of um, things in this course but I'm just telling you what you can do with npm um, and its package files. There's gonna be a video from uh, a talk about this so check out the reference uh, in, uh, at the course web. Um, okay, I'm just saving that and I'm gonna try to run that and then I do the command npm run build because build is a custom thing I have uh, and you see it, it's doing the echo uh, do build stuff and it's writing out build stuff. We have some kind of system for making commands and run it through npm. Okay, we're gonna leave that for now. We're gonna concentrate on how to install npm packages. Uh, and you, all of you have probably sometimes written npm install. Uh, what that command is doing, it's, it's gonna look through this um, package.json and look for dependencies um, fetch them on the web, download them, and install them. In this case we don't have any dependencies yet. Uh, uh, there is no key li uh, like dependencies or dev dependencies um, or stuff like that. So when we're gonna do npn install on this, uh, well it's not gonna do anything. Uh, so, let's say that we want to install a package of any kind. Um, I'm going to do some demos later on and then there I'm going to use uh, one package that helped me to um, write a URL. That, that package is going to fetch the HTML from that URL and give it to me so I can work, work on it. Uh, so how do I find this? As you know, the, the node core is pretty small. They try to hold it small and try to let other developers make packages or modules for you to use. So you're gonna find these modules and see if, it's, if they are any good, if they solve your problem and so on. So how, how do you do that? Well, um, the common way to do this is, yeah, you can Google and probably you find something about it. Uh, but uh, uh, a common way is to go to the page npmjs.com. Um, here you find uh, uh, lots of information about npm and all the modules people are, uh, have written for you to use. And here you also can search. Uh, for a different kind of packages. You see we have the most uh, popular uh, Browserify, uh, you know, Express, we're gonna use it in this course. Uh, there are uh, PM2 we probably also gonna use uh, and we're gonna get back to this page. But for now we're gonna um, try to find a module that um, Gives, gives us the opportunity to do a request for our HTTP TP, uh, page so we can write our URL and get the content of that page. I've done my homework so I know what the name of the package is I'm gonna use. Uh, request um, and here we find it, a simple file HTTP request client. I'm clicking on that and we see here, it looks like just the things I needed. Uh, we're gonna install this, we're gonna use to require it um, on uh, URL, get the callback and here we have the body of the show the HTML for the Google homepage. Just what, what I wanted. 
And here we also can see that, okay, if you're gonna use this, you're gonna write npm install and the name of the module request in this case. We can also see that this has 20 dependencies. This package is using 20 other modules. So let's try that out. Uh, okay, I can write mp oh, yeah. npm install request. Uh, uh, what this gonna do? It's it's gonna um, download this package for me and install it, and I'm ready to use it in my node code. I wanna put a flag on with two hyphens and the keyword save, cause. What this is going to do, it's, it's going to install it and, and stuff like that, but it's also going to save this into the package.json file. Okay, let's write, let's do this command. You see, oh, it's downloading uh, the package, it's downloading all, uh, all of its dependencies, taking a real good time. Uh, okay. That's probably because we are on uh, the virtual machine. You can see, well, it was pretty much dependency and some of the, these dependencies have other dependencies. So it's going to install a lot, a lot of uh, different modules and packages. Again, this is what the philosophy behind Node is. It's better to have a small core and use many, many uh, other dependencies, smaller modules that are good at doing exactly what they mean to. So this is not a usually many dependencies to install. Okay, so let's go back to our package.json and look what's happened. Two things to notice here. The first thing, we have got an folder called node underscore modules it's the their oldest packages we were and the dependencies were downloaded too we can see it's pretty many of these and if we start looking at one we see well it's a package with some code with some own package file and stuff like that so well so that's the folder where um, the packages are installed. Another thing we can notice is that in the package.json file, look, it's added dependencies and the request at the version 2.67.0. Uh, that's fine. That was because I used, I added a save flag, um, and that, that's fine. Think of it when we're gonna push this repository up to github should we push all these node modules too it's a lot of files we probably won't because we put in our git ignore don't uh, add the node modules files the files in the node modules folder so it's better to put the dependency in the package json so when a user is cloning your repository, all he or she has to do is do the npm install, it's gonna go through the package.json file, find the dependencies and doing an npm install request, npm install whatever dependency we, we have. So we don't have to put the node modules on, on to github some people do because they want to have the exactly version and uh, and stuff like that many uh, but in many cases that's just unnecessary so it's better to install them with the save flag uh, make sure that they are in the package file and then when you just clone out, clone out the project run npn install to install all dependencies uh, so that's why. Uh, okay, we're gonna install another uh, package. We probably gonna use a package called Sherio, which is a package where who let you 
uh, write selector questions. So when you have downloaded the HTML code, you can write a selector statement that's just fetching exactly the, the, the stuff in the HTML doom you want. Uh, say for example, we, we download a page and we're gonna uh, pull out the title of that page. We can use Cherio to write a selector uh, thing, a selector statement and just get the text for the title. So I have done my homework and I know that this is called Cherio, like that. Uh, I do a save on that too. Uh, it's downloaded. And we see it have some kind of uh, dependencies. Uh, we go back to the uh, package and we see that it's added um, in a Cherio to the dependencies also. Uh, okay, npm install. Uh, let's, uh, we can do uh, one thing. Uh, let's say we remove that uh, file node modules for every dependency that we have. Uh, and we no now uh, we don't have these dependencies, uh, but we're gonna install them. And since we have saved them in the package.json, we can now just run npm install and it will go through the package.json. You see, it started to do the downloads again. And There we are, and now we have the node modules and all the packages that was defined as dependencies here. Um, so probably when you clone down from a GitHub repo, you won't have the node modules folder. So you have always to run npm install, read the package file uh, for the dependencies and, and install uh, all the packages. Uh, Okay, there are some other ways to install some packages. Uh, let's say that we're going to have a test framework or a build framework or, or something like that. Something that we don't going to put on the production server for the um, application. Just tools we're using during the development. Um, we can install these as dev dependencies. Uh, production stuff is dependency stuff that we need to run our application, but tools that uh, examinate our code, writing tests or stuff like that, uh, we install as dev dependencies. Uh, let's say npm install, I know there is a pop popular um, um, testing framework called Mocha. You uh, I do save, but also put on dev. Okay, it's gonna install, download and install the dependency. Uh, and if we look at the package.json, we see that it's installed as dev dependencies. In this way, we know if you're gonna put this application on a production server, it's just these dependencies we need to um, to install. Dev dependencies shouldn't be installed on a production server. Um, in most cases anyway. Um, when we do npm install every package is installed in the local project, in the application project, in the node module folder. But we can install some npm packages also as what we call uh, globals. Um, the way we do it, you can try to do it with the GS hint library. Uh, it's to just add a flag G as this. This uh, st stands for global. And when I do this, um, it's gonna. It's look. It's downloading and it's installing the stuff. 
but if we now look in the node modules folder here uh, yes hint we see we, we can't find the yes hint uh, package here well that's because it's have been installed globally and it's installed you can see if we find it uh, I'm using the command which to find out where node is installed on this computer. Uh, we are in the Ubuntu computer, the virtual machine. So let's go to that. Uh, directory. Uh, and as you see, when I do ls there, you see we have the gsint. Uh, maybe that's a better way to do it. We do cd lib. Um, there we have the global node modules folder. This is depending on the operation system, and this is a virtual box, uh, virtual machine. So this this path can be different if you're sitting on a Windows system, if you're sitting on a Mac system, or so. But what you have to know, we did it with the uh, GI flag. It's installed it globally, and it's gonna be installed in the same directory as the node. Uh, somewhere there, you're gonna find a node. Uh, modules folder and we should see the yes hint there. Let's get back Vagrant uh, clear. So when we install packages with the G flag uh, global um, we, we can use it um, in our applications uh, do the require without uh, having to do a local installation of the package. Um, the recommended way is to do a local installation uh, so you don't uh, clutter your operation system with global uh, packages. Uh, but if you want some, some packages are needed to be um, installed globally so you can um, execute their bin files and stuff like that but if you read the uh, documentation of the different packages you will notice when to use the G flag. So we have the different ways to use this npm install. Um, npm mainly used to doing npm install. We can also do uh, npm on install. Um, let's remove this hint from the global uh, and it's it's a easy way to uninstall the modules we don't want. We can also use npm to do the package JSON file in an empty project npm init uh, and we also can use npm as a as a tool to do some commands for us. Uh, I haven't talked so much about that but I recommend you watch the video which is um, linked from the course materials um, to get a, a better view of using that. We, we're not going to talk so much about build tools and stuff like that, so you are on your own to discover how to, to use that. Uh, but this is okay for now. We have installed two libraries. We're going to use them in the next videos where we're going to talk about the event-driven uh, programming models uh, and doing some uh, code demos.